Hi, and welcome or welcome back to Mallory in the Library. I'm Mallory, and today we're going to be reading stories about imagination. I know a lot of kids have been spending a lot of time thinking of what to do and how to make things fun, and I'm sure a lot of parents are thinking the same thing. And so today we have some stories about some fun ways to use uh, your imagination. Today, uh, we're going to start with a book by David Suzuki called There is a Barnyard in My Bedroom. Um, David Suzuki is an, an environmentalist, and so he does a lot of work in Canada about uh, taking care of our ecosystem. A Rainy Day Hike Wake up, Jamie, says Megan. It's Saturday. Today, we go on our nature hike with Daddy. Mm, Jamie says into his pillow. Suddenly, Megan hears a pit-a-pat on the window. Oh no, it's raining. What will we do, Dad? No problem, says Dad. We can take our hike in the house. Jamie's eyes fly open. How can we do that? We can start right here with the sheets and blanket on your bed. Where did they come from? Oh, I know, says Megan. The sheets are made of cotton and the blanket is made from wool. Cotton comes from a plant and wool is sheep fur. Right, Dad? Right. Now, guess what's inside your pillow? Feathers, Jamie cries. They fly out when Megan and I have a pillow fight. What bird do they come from, Dad? Probably ducks or geese or even chickens. Okay, hikers, to the kitchen. What else comes from chickens? Eggs, says Megan, and cheese and milk come from? Cows, cries Jamie. We have a whole farmyard in our refrigerator. Carrots and peas and bananas come from plants, Megan says. Does all of our food come from animals and plants? Jamie asks. Yes, all the food we need comes from nature, Dad says. And you know what? We also have a forest in the house. Can you find it? Wow, all of those things coming from the fridge. I know, I know, says Jamie. The floor and chairs are made from wood from trees. Yes, your dresser is made from pine trees, and the dining room table is made from oak trees. That's where acorns come from too, says Megan. So maybe there were squirrels running around in the oak tree before it became a table, Jamie says. Sure, says Dad, probably birds and insects too. What about that picture frame, Dad? asked Megan. That wood came all the way from a tropical rainforest. It's mahogany, but in many places, rainforests are being cut down too quickly to grow back. Isn't paper made from wood too? You bet, lots and lots of wood. Think of all the trees in our books and newspapers and magazines. We can recycle that wood, can't we, Dad? And use the trees over and over. Yes, indeed, as long as we don't use too much all at once, uh, we can keep on making lots of trees. Where else can we go on our nature hike, Dad? How about China? China, Megan laughs. That's all the way around the world. Nope, it's right here. Follow me. The three hikers troop down the hall. Your mom's nightgown is made of silk from China. And silk is made from caterpillars. They spin it into cocoons. What about this sponge, Jamie calls from the bathroom? Did some animal make it? That sponge used to be an animal. It lived at the bottom of the ocean. We sure have a lot of things that come from nature. Can you think of anything that doesn't? Plastic, cries Jamie, pointing to the shower curtain. Or is there a plastic tree? Dad laughs. No, plastic comes from oil, but oil, gas, and coal come from plants that lived millions of years ago. The plants were buried for a very long time and slowly they turned into oil, gas, and coal. So maybe the plastic in my pen came from a tree that a dinosaur chomped on, says Jamie. 
Maybe it did, Dot agrees. Is nature in everything then? Jamie asks. Yes, everything. The glass in the window is made from sand. The dishes are made from clay. The metal in your knife and spoon comes from rocks. Wherever we go, nature is all around us. Wow, says Megan. We've traveled back millions of years and all over the world on this nature hike. Yeah, says Jamie. I wonder where we'll go on our next one. So this part is called seeing the air. Finally, it's, well, you know, actually, this story is quite long. So I think what we're going to do is enjoy that part of the nature hike. And then um, we'll move on to our next story, which is called Ocean Meets Sky. And this story is by the Fan Brothers. And I think it has the most beautiful pictures and will really help us use our imagination. Finn lived by the sea, and the sea lived by him. It's a good day for sailing, his grandfather would have said. Finn remembered Grandpa's voice, telling him stories about a place far away where ocean meets sky. His grandfather would have been 90 years old today. To honor him, Finn built a boat, a boat fit for a long journey, one they had planned together. Boat building was hard work. Finn took a short nap below decks. When he awoke, he felt the boat rocking gently beneath him. The journey had begun. I didn't think the open sea would feel so lonely, Finn said after some time. This caught the attention of a great golden fish. Do you know where ocean meets sky? Finn asked the fish. It's high and low and as deep as the sea, the fish answered in a voice that made Finn's boat shake. It's up and down and very far and I can show you the way. He followed the golden fish to the library islands where a hundred bookish birds were roosting. They explored an island of giant shells. Excuse me and crossed a sea of moon jellies dancing. But then, Finn's eyes filled with wonder. Had he finally reached the place of grandfather's stories? Let's see how this shows that boat. The magical place where ocean meets sky. His boat began to lift from off the water, or had the water fallen away? It would be quite a big creature to encounter. There's all kinds of ships here. Some you might recognize, some you might not. Um, this one looks kind of like an old steamship. Uh, got a castle, maybe a kraken. Um, these are called zeppelins. 
They're like blimps and people used to travel in them a long time ago. The golden fish swam toward the moon. Finn followed. He wanted to say goodbye. Looks like someone's in the moon. I think that that could be Finn's grandfather. He had so many questions, but he heard a voice calling to him from far away. Wake up, it's time for dinner, said his mother. I made grandpa's dumplings. Finn looked out across the sea to that magical place far away where ocean meets sky. It had been a good day for sailing. You can see, you can still see his grandfather's face in the moon. Um, one thing I do want to point out, actually, before I put this one away, is you can see the colors on these pages, but when Finn is using his imagination, the pages and the drawings are so much more colorful. And I wonder if some of you guys feel that way too sometimes. That things are very colorful in imagination when we're using our imagination. So the next one is called uh, The Magic Boat. It's by Kit Pearson and Catherine Ferris, and it's illustrated by Gabrielle Grimard. Every summer morning, Ellie and Nona went to the beach. Ellie built castles and decorated them with shells and pebbles. She stood on the shore and let the cold waves wash over her toes. She jumped on kelp bulbs to make them pop. Why don't you play with the other children? Nona asked Ellie. But Ellie was too shy to talk to them. One morning, Ellie wandered along the beach collecting pebbles. An older girl was sitting on a log. She watched Ellie for a few seconds. Do you want to see my magic boat? She asked. Ellie followed the girl to an old blue boat that was half buried in the sand. The girl climbed into the boat and told Ellie to sit behind her. The boat did not seem magic at all. Its paint was peeling and the seat under Ellie was rough and splintery. Ellie looked across the beach at Nona Nona waved. She seemed very far away. Let's go to sea, said the girl. Ellie clutched the side of the boat and closed her eyes. When she opened them, they were on the water. The old boat had turned into a sleek dinghy with an orange sails. Ellie controlled the rudder while the boat tapped this way and that. Uh, they skimmed past islands studded with sleepy seals. They raced a boy in another boat. In the distance, a pod of orcas sliced through the waves. Nearby, a heron was trying to swallow a very large fish. When they laughed, the heron croaked and flew into the air. Let's fly, said the girl. So when you do, um, they said that they were tacking a lot, that's when you change directions in a sailboat with the wind. The boat turned into a balloon and up, up they rose with the gulls. A red-headed vulture wobbled above them, searching for carrion. They looked down upon an eagle's nest. A tidy ladybug zipped by. A raven flew so close they could hear the whoomph of its wings and then it turned a somersault in the air. A kingfisher let out a rattling cry and plunged into the water.
Ellie, called a faraway voice. The balloon turned back into the old blue boat. It's time for our snack, called Nona. Bring your friend. Ellie and the girl sat on a blanket, eating Nanaimo bars and drinking juice. What's your name? asked Nona. Piper, said the girl. This is Ellie, said Nona. The next morning, Ellie rushed to the boat, and Piper was sitting in it, waiting for her. Today, can we go under the sea? asked Ellie. The boat became a submarine. Down, down it sank into the dark ocean depths. Above them shimmered a tight herring ball. They followed a glowing jellyfish carried by the current. A giant octopus spread out its legs as it landed on the seabed. And schools of perch darted through a forest of sponges. A fat otter zoomed up to the surface. His mouth was full of crabs. From far away, a boy called Piper. At once, Ellie and Piper were back on the beach, sitting in the old blue boat. It's time to go, called the boy. That's my brother, said Piper. Will I see you tomorrow, asked Ellie. Piper shook her head. Tomorrow, we're going back to the city. The next morning, Ellie sat in the old blue boat all by herself. She tried to sail out to sea, she tried to fly in the air, and she tried to sink under the water, but nothing happened. Ellie got out of the boat. She sat beside Nona for a long time, watching a boy dig a hole. There's nothing to do, she complained. And I know that we have all thought that at some point or another, especially now. For a while, Nona helped Ellie build a castle, but then she went back to her book. Why don't you play with that boy, she asked. Ellie shook her head. She wrapped her towel around her and sat with her back to Nona, staring at the empty boat. The boy was there again the next day. Ellie looked at him. She looked at the boat. Hi, she said. My name is Ellie. What's yours? Sasha, said the boy shyly. Ellie smiled at Sasha. Want to see my magic boat? It looks like he did. Oh, and at the end, it says, for Ellie and Sasha. And it says, for Thomas, the cutest little imaginary boy that I know. And what's great about this book, and I think we'll find this in our next story too, is that your imagination is even better when you use it with other people and are able to share with other people. But I know it's hard to have people around right now. So if it's just you and your imagination, that is a great place to be too. So I think some kids really liked um, one story that we read last week. So we're going to read a really similar one, if you can guess what it is. Uh, it's going to be another elephant and piggy story. This one is called Let's Go for a Drive. And if we have time after, we'll go back to it. There's a, um, there's a barnyard in my bedroom. So this one's Let's Go for a Drive by Mo Willems. Piggy, I have a great idea. Let's go for a drive. That sounds fun. Drive, drive, drivey, drive, drive. Wait, if we are going on a drive, we need a plan. A plan? First, we need a map. I have a map. Get that map. 
you cannot go for a drive without a map. I have the map. Drive, drive, drivey drive, drive. Map, map, mappy map, map. Wait! It might be sunny when we drive. Mm -hmm. What do we do? We need sunglasses. I have sunglasses. Get those sunglasses. Bringing sunglasses on a drive is smart planning. I have the sunglasses. Drive, drive, drivey drive, drive. Sunglasses, sunglasses, sunny sunglasses. Wait! It might rain while we drive. We need umbrellas. I have umbrellas. Get those umbrellas. Make a plan and stick to it is what I say. I have the umbrellas. Drive, drive, drivey drive, drive. Umbrellas, umbrellas, umbrella umbrellas. Wait! We have so much stuff to pack. I sure do. We need bags. I have bags. Get those bags. You cannot go wrong with a good plan. Oof! I have the bags. Drive, drive, drivey drive, drive. Bags, bags, baggy bag, bags. Wait! There will be a lot of driving on our drive. Hmm. We need a car! Hmm. Kind of an important part of the drive. I said, we need a car. Do you think Gerald hopes that you will have a car? Just like she had all that other stuff. Um, do you have a car, Piggy? No, I am a pig. A pig with a car would be silly. Do you have a car? You do not have a car. Oh no! We have everything we need for our drive! Except a car! Our plans are ruined! What are we going to do now? Uh-oh, what could they do? We could play pirate. Who needs plans when you have a pig for a pal? Arr. And it looks like they used all of their Sunglasses for eye patches, and the map is their sail, and they have all the bags to make the ship. So there's all kinds of fun that you can have when you use your imagination. And some kids like to look for the pigeon at the back of the book, if you can see it. So we only have a couple minutes left, so I think we'll save There's a Barnyard in My Bedroom, the second part, for another time. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you like these stories about imagination and I would love to hear how you're inspired to use your imagination or what you've been doing to 
uh, use your imagination. Next week, we are going to have stories about dance and dancing. I think that's another really fun thing that we can do at home and um, just have a great time with family or whoever you're with right now doing some dancing activities to keep our minds and our bodies healthy. So thank you so much for joining me for our stories on imagination and I hope that I see you next week. Have a great week.